This is finding your voice on TikTok. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Grace Curtis. I am the uh, PR and community manager at Future Friends Games, which is a publishing and promotion hybrid company based in the United Kingdom. In terms of why the hell I'm even qualified to be talking about this, um, with my time at Future Friends, I've had the opportunity to work and help grow a great number of uh, really interesting, fantastic TikTok accounts. So in terms of the publishing side of the company, I helped work on games like X01, Omno, and uh, through our many wonderful clients. It was uh, Clone Drone in the Danger Zone, Vampire Survivors, Hype Train, Heavenly Bodies, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and as you can see, the numbers we were able to achieve were pretty good across the board. Um, over 150,000 followers for X01, over 200,000 for Omno, uh, many, many more heavenly bodies hit 1.3 million on our first post, which I was very proud of. Um, and our biggest video overall was the X01 launch TikTok, which got 9 million views organically. And we were able to achieve this without spending a single penny on ads or, uh, you know, promotion within TikTok. We did all of this organically. And furthermore, we kind of had to do it in our spare time. We're a really small company and we have a lot of stuff to do. And uh, so this was all kind of achieved on a shoestring budget, both in terms of uh, money and time. For a more recent example of a TikTok that did really, really well, so this is from our upcoming game Europa, which is hopefully gonna be out this year. Let's see if it wants to play. Um, and that got 900,000 views last time I checked. So, still got it. <laughs> TikTok, all right. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, um, congratulations on bravely walking into this room, not knowing what you're about to see. Uh, it is a video sharing platform, and uh, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, last year, 2022, it was the most downloaded app uh, in the world. It's got about a billion monthly users, and the people who are on TikTok are mostly very young and uh, digitally literate. A recent report by the New York Times found that about 40% of people with gen people uh, who are in the Generation Z, so that's me, the Zoomers, uh, are using apps like TikTok and Instagram instead of Google. Uh, so they're, they're hustling in on Google's territory, which is how you know this is a big deal. <laughs> um, hang on. Zoomer stocks, there you go. <laughs> uh, the thing that makes TikTok special is the thing that most people really struggle to understand about it, which is a For You page. Rather than showing you content by people you follow, when you open up TikTok, what you get is a stream of seemingly random videos. But the more time you spend on the app, as you interact with those videos, liking, commenting, or swiping on past, the TikTok algorithm will monitor that information and use it to further curate your feed. So the more time you spend on TikTok, the better the platform becomes. This is how we were able to achieve those really big organic numbers that I told you about before. It was by getting on people's For You pages. And that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about today. How to do that in a way that isn't um, shady, embarrassing, cringe, or just difficult. Uh, about those numbers, right. I obviously shouldn't have to explain to you the benefit of having nine million people see your game, but it's still worth uh, drilling in a little bit. So this is a graph showing wishlist activity on the X01 Steam page beginning uh, in May 2021, first time when we first uh, started the TikTok account and running all the way up till launch. Um, I should uh, probably explain before we go in further what a wishlist is for those of you who don't know. You can essentially think of it as sort of a tier below a pre-order. It's a button that you can click on a Steam page which will basically say to Steam, hey, I'm not willing to put money on the line just yet, but I might potentially want to buy this game somewhere down the line. So when the game launches, they get an email, they get another one when it goes on sale. As uh, indie developers in this uh, PC space, this is kind of the best tool that we have to figure out how well something is gonna do prior to actually putting it on sale. And uh, it's also something that Steam uses to decide what kind of positioning to give your game within the Steam storefront. So you get a lot of wish lists, your game gets good featuring on Steam, which then gets it more wish lists, yada, 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 wish lists are very, very good. 
uh, I was able to map the witch list activity on the XO1 Steam page pretty consistently to the viral videos that we had over that time period. You can see, got a nice big spike with our first ever video there. Uh, had another viral video a little while later, which didn't convert quite as well. Whole bunch of little bumps. And then uh, we had a nice spike when we put the game's uh, demo on the next fest, and then an even bigger one when we advertised that demo on TikTok. Uh, so, and uh, when we launched X01, we had 100,000 wish lists, which for a little game like that from a solo developer with a publisher that was like five people at the time was really amazing. And uh, I really think the numbers show that, X that TikTok contributed to us having that. If you want an even starker example of this, this is a graph that was kindly donated to me by uh, Keela. She's a developer of a game called Mailtime. Uh, Keela has a fantastic TikTok account that you should all check out. Uh, but you can see here the wish list spikes that Keela gets from a big TikTok. So these are all have got about 1 million views each. But the wish list conversion is about the same as she got from the Future Games show at Gamescom. So uh, yes, in summary, Provided that you make good use of the single link that TikTok allows you to have in your bio, you can see real tangible growth from this platform. Whoa. So I think one of the things, aside from just fear of embarrassment, what keeps a lot of developers off TikTok is just not knowing where to begin. So before we dive into the nitty gritty, I just really wanted to quickly share with you my workflow. Um, sounds are the backbone of uh, TikTok. It's one of the few social media platforms where people actually engage with the sounds. And so in my opinion, that's where you should begin if you don't know where to start. You can get a sound either from the TikTok app itself or you can download it from YouTube. Take that sound, take whatever footage you want to use and go over to uh, your preferred video editing software. Do all the fiddly stuff uh, on your computer because if you try to edit the entire thing in the TikTok uh, in-app editor, you will go insane. Once uh, that's done and you have like a bit of video that you're happy with, take it back to TikTok. Uh, and this is the tricky bit, and this is the part that I always have to explain to clients. You then want to find whatever sound you're using in the TikTok sound library, put it back in the video. This is a way of, for example, if you're using like a Doja Cat sound, you want to find that Doja Cat sound in the library, put it in the video and have it as a soundtrack. Therefore, other people who are enjoying that same wonderful little bit of music will be recommended uh, your content. Then now that's tricky bits done, you can start having fun. Do cap cut edits, which is a, a new feature where you can have a kind of editing format put in the video for you, or you can do green screen, or you can do silly voices, like whatever fun, ridiculous thing you wanna have, do that in the TikTok editor. And the last thing you do before you upload, add a caption. Like I said before, a lot of young people are using uh, TikTok to kind of search for things, similar to Google, and they also have kind of an SEO system. So drop a couple keywords into the caption, choose a couple cool hashtags, and then uh, upload the video, sit back, and wait to go viral. Uh, <laughs> and wait, and wait, and wait, uh, because it's not gonna happen right away. TikTok is really hard, and there's like a thousands and thousands of people uploading videos every single day. So how do you stand out? You stand out by blending in. Counterintuitive, I know. But uh, this is something that we've learned over time. So for example, one of the first things we do when we have like a brand new TikTok account for a game that no one's ever seen before is upload a trailer because a trailer is a really nice asset. It's, you know, why wouldn't you put it on another platform, right? And that's exactly what we did with X01. We uploaded two extremely beautiful trailers to the account and they wound up getting, I think, t about 29,000 views each, which is great, but compared to an account where most of the videos got hundreds of thousands, it's a significant overperformance. Un over? Underperformance. And the reason I believe for this is TikTok has a young audience, right? And the thing about young people, people of, of you know, that kind of late 90s, early 2000s milieu, is that we have been bombarded with advertising from pretty much the second we opened our little eyes and saw the world. And we are really, really good at detecting it. Anything that looks too polished, sounds too nice, has too much you know, effort and money put into it, our brain goes, uh -uh, that's advertising, and we will flick it right, right? And the whole point of TikTok is you don't want people to do that. So uh, how do you keep people from switching off your video right away? This is a point so important that I've given it its own slide. Make a TikTok that looks like a TikTok. Uh, obviously, uh, seems stupid, right? How do you do that? How do you make a TikTok that looks like a TikTok? I'll tell you, there's three words in it. Low production value. <laughs> Why go to the studio and film yourself in like a bunch of nice cameras when you could just put your phone 
on your dresser and talk straight to the camera? Why use OBS when you could just film your screen? As, soon, as long as you are using the tools that a teenager with zero resources would use, you will look like you blend in. Uh, at its most simple, blending in can literally just be the thing that I showed you before with that Europa video, which is a short, unbroken clip of gameplay. And the reason this works where tightly edited trailers do not is that instead of speaking in the language of advertisements, you're speaking in the language of Let's Plays and Twitch streams. In short, you look like you belong. The next thing I wanna dive into is trends. So TikTok was originally a karaoke app and music is still very much woven into the DNA of how TikTok functions. So on TikTok, you will have these things called viral sounds, which is basically a single sound clip that is being reused over multiple videos. Uh, and this could be anything. It could be you know, a little bit of a song. It could be a bit of a comedy skit. It could be Louis Theroux rapping, auto-tuned to Pash Bell's canon. I don't know why that one did so well, but God, we had a whole month of Louis Theroux. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the point is, these can imply either a certain uh, format to the video or just a certain vibe. But they give you uh, a sort of way, a, a, a format to map your video onto, right? Um, this uh, not only will give you like a lot of ideas if you're running out of ideas, uh, and it will not only make you look like you belong on TikTok, it will also help you find an audience, again, through the aforementioned algorithm. It's all about giving TikTok little signals as to who they want to show the video to. Uh, finding trends is a full-time job. TikTok, uh, my boss Thomas Reisenegger, I hope you just saw his talk before, he's the absolute master at doing this. And so he very kindly donated to me this list, if anyone wants to take a picture. These are the accounts that Thomas uses to kind of spot trends ahead of time. Uh, th so that's how he does it. I have a different strategy, which is that I have no life. <laughs> And I'm just on TikTok all the time. And really, there is no replacement for just being immersed in the app. Every social media app has its own cadence. You know, like on Twitter, you have to sound like sanctimonious and annoying, etc. The more you immerse yourself in TikTok, the easier it will be able to come to match the cadence of the platform. So yeah, get on there, start watching, and soon you too will become uh, completely insufferable like me. <laughs> uh, to make the next point, I want to show you another... A TikTok video, this is from the Exelon account. It's a video that got 1.7 million views. So, the thing that I want to highlight about that video is the visuals. TikTok is first and foremost a dopamine treadmill, and it encourages you to make snap decisions about whether or not what you're looking at is for you. You are literally competing with N plus one people all of the time, so showing something good in the first second is paramount. Uh, visually compelling games like X or One, like Omno, have an obviously massive advantage in this field, but remember kids, ugly games go viral too. <laughs> What you have to do is just show them something visually compelling, be it beautiful, funny, weird, whatever it is, just have it on screen right away. If you're not showing them your lovely face, you have to give them something cool to look at. The other thing that we do in that video is we establish context. Because of the way TikTok works, the vast majority of people who view your video will be viewing that thing for the first time. They have no idea who you are. So you need to communicate two things right away. One, that what they're seeing is a game and two, that it is a game that you have made. Uh, it's easy to forget this because we are surrounded by game people all the time, but this is a really cool thing to do for a living. And uh, if you express that this is a uh, game that you have helped create, not only will you put yourself in a position of authority, you'll also like pique people's curiosity. Right away, they will make a connection with you and be compelled to hopefully find out more. Up next, the power of personality. Um, so Victoria Tran, who is like an incredible uh, powerhouse community manager from Innisloth, uh, last year released a fantastic postmortem of the Among Us TikTok account. And one of the things she found in that postmortem is that uh, while updates for Among Us got the best view numbers, personality-driven content, so that's just Victoria clowning around on the phone, uh, those got the best engagement. And having been working on TikTok for like over two years now, the power of personality is something that I think really, really holds up. Most of the really big powerhouse video game accounts are ones that make use of a 
human voice and a friendly face. You know, so example, Landfall, 1.5 million followers, Tiny Glade, that's another recent hit. Uh, they both have kind of a human presence on all or most of their videos. However, um, you don't have to be hugely charismatic in order for this to work. So most of the XO1 account videos were similar to the thing you just saw, just uh, footage in text, right? But we were able to persuade developer J to lend his voice to two videos. And he read uh, those words out in his best, dull, I don't want to be here, Australian monotone. <laughs> and they got uh, 2.7 and 9 million views respectively, making them the highest performing videos on the entire account. The uh, appeal of TikTok, I think, is fundamentally the same as the appeal of YouTube and Twitch and Twitter and everything else, which is that it is a friend in your pocket. If you want to watch a trailer and read a press release, there are an infinite number of places where you can go and do that. But the opportunity you have, the thing you can offer people here is a chance to make a really small but meaningful connection with the real human beings who make the stuff they love. And if you can offer that to people, you will get yourself not just a viewer, but an audience member, hopefully. Next up, watch times. <laughs> this is uh, some data that was very kindly donated to me by Jared of um, Devolver. He did a really fantastic deep dive into uh, one and a half thousand different TikTok accounts from indie games. And one of his many findings was that uh, watch time and total watch percentage have a strong correlation with how many views a video gets overall. And this has been backed up by an investigation from the Wall Street Journal a couple of years ago, which again found that full watch percentage is at the heart of how TikTok decides whether or not your video is worth putting on people's pages. So in short, whether or not people get to the end of your video and whether or not they then go back and watch it again is a really significant factor in how well you're gonna do. Um, now obviously, figuring out how to make people watch your stuff to the end is like the question and you could ask 100 community managers and get 101 different responses. But I have a theory, which is I believe that it boils down to structure. Structure as in, uh, set up and payoff, a two-part structure. So how it started versus how it's going is a phrase that you see all over the place on TikTok, not just in the indie game sphere. And uh, the reason I think that people keep using this over and over again is because it works really well. Uh, you give people the promise of something cool while showing them something intriguing. And if you can pay off that promise with something cool, you're golden. You've fulfilled your contract as a uh, you know three-second bit of entertainment for them. But of course, that is only one way that you can uh, use the sort of setup and payoff method. There's kind of infinite ways to apply this if you really think about it. Lists is an absolute classic one, you know, three fantastic environments in my game, and then you show three fantastic environments or three funny glitches, yada, yada. Um, most jokes have a one-two setup, you know, show something serious and then contrast it with something silly. We love to do this for vampire survivors, works like a charm. Um, and of course, you have the Q&A format. TikTok has a native feature where people can leave questions and you can answer that question with a video, which means you are basically giving them the setup and payoff almost at the same time. And if you're feeling really bold, you can combine multiple formats. So this video we have here is the TikTok video we made announcing that Vampire Survivors was coming to Xbox, where I combined a Q&A format feature with a funny trending sound at the time. Uh, let's watch it together now. Coming to Xbox November 10th. <laughs> that video got almost as many views as the official Xbox trailer on the official Xbox YouTube account. And it took me 25 minutes to make. And most of that time was spent making the bats. <laughs> so uh, yeah, set up and pay off, it works. My uh, final closing thought, the sort of thing that I want to leave you with to chew over as you go have your coffees and hang out, is uh, stick with it. Finding your voice, finding your tone, finding your workflow, all of this stuff takes time. So be kind to yourself. As far as we can tell, TikTok does not penalize you for failing. If you make a bunch of videos that no one sees, that doesn't affect the likelihood of your next video doing well. And I know this because that's exactly what happened with XO one right? Me and Thomas were having a competition to see who could go viral first, but everything we posted just got like a couple thousand views. Very depressing, and then after I think about a half dozen tries, suddenly, overnight, half a million. 
So yeah, keep trying, fall on your face, fail, pick yourself up, try again. Um, it's a dancing app for children. Uh, don't get too stressed about it. Uh, it's, it's more about, it's less about creating a single perfect thing than it is about spinning the roulette wheel enough times until you get, uh, you hit on something that works. Now, because of that algorithm-driven format, everything that you start, you, you, you have a blank slate, not just with every account, but with every video that you post, um, which is obviously really exhausting <laughs> and frustrating at times, yes, but uh, it means that you also have an infinite amount of fresh starts uh, and that you never know what's going to happen next. Uh, and yep, this is just some of the sources I used. So Jared, Victoria, Thomas, uh, the Wall Street Journal. Um, yes, that's, uh, that's my talk. Thanks so much, everyone. Wow, I zoomed through that super fast. <laughs> I was talking, uh, talking super speedy. But yes, if anyone has any questions, I think we have time now. I have a question about um, length of videos, because you mentioned watch percentage heavily mm -hmm. correlates with performance. So the immediate logic is make a really short video. Does that work or not? I think that was another thing. This is, you should uh, go back and read Jared's talk, because this is something he went into as well. There is kind of a sweet spot, which I believe is at around the 15 to 30 second mark. But it's not a huge factor. If you have a really fantastic 30 second video, I think you still have a good choice of that. Don't just upload a bunch of two second clips <laughs> and hope that people don't get the time to skip past, because I'm pretty sure TikTok has uh, allowed for that to not happen. But yeah, we tend to hit around the 15 to 30 second mark, and we find that works pretty well consistently. Thank you. No worries. Uh, over there. Hey, thanks so much for the talk. No worries. Uh, I was wondering at Future Friends, how much do you guys focus on uh, post timing? Like what day or what hour of that day uh, posting certain videos? Or do you guys just post whenever and let it go viral? Uh, we do, I think we tend to aim for like late afternoon, early evening. Just anecdotally, that's when we found videos tend to do their best because that's when people are kind of online. We also think really hard about regions. So uh, TikToks that are posted from like North America and the UK have a tendency to reach more people than those that are, you know, uploaded from Europe because it's um, set to your VPN. Um, not your VPN, your IP address. But uh, it's all kind of a black magic, like we don't have hard data on when's best or not. But yeah, posting the video when roughly you think that people are gonna be online and posting it from a country where a lot of people live generally works for us. Thank you. No worries. Uh, thanks very much for the talk. Do you yep. find in practical terms it's better to have a publisher account or a developer account or a personal account or an account per game? Um, that's that's a big question. I mean, we've had success with both formats. The one thing I'll say, um, having a business account, I think it's helpful for ads, but it imposes a lot of uh, limitations in terms of what sounds you use. So we find it's easier to go viral with like a personal non-business account. Um, but again, because of that format where everything is being kind of seen for the first time. So when we worked on the hype train, they obviously have a whole bunch of different games and we were able to kind of go viral with a bunch of different individual videos, right? So we had one introducing Euro Truck World, another one introducing uh, Void Train, and they kind of did well individually. However, if you want to, if basically, if you want to do a landfall or do an inner sloth, where you have kind of an audience that you're gathering over time and kind of earning their trust, uh, it's probably better to focus on one game at a time per account. Cool, thank you very much. No worries. Uh, Hi. Hello. Uh, sorry. Uh, before you uh, recommended to edit uh, outside the TikTok plat platform because like you would be crazy otherwise, uh, but you also recommended to like kind of blend in and have a low production value by mm -hmm. not editing too much. So well, do you like draw the line too much editing? Uh, I mean, again, that's like a really open question. I think if you look at uh, something like Cult of the Lamb, they have really fantastic videos which actually have quite a high production value, and they get away with that because their game is extremely beautiful and entertaining, and they make excellent content. Um, for me, what I tend to do is. Uh, I, I like the, uh, the work to be kind of invisible. So I want the cuts to be really smooth. I want the gameplay to be really clear. That's the kind of thing that people take for granted, essentially. But uh, once I have something that sort of matches very well to the beat of the song, then um, I take that to TikTok and I do the kind of scrappy stuff on there. But I think that's really more about what kind of ceiling, how much time you have. Like, I'm not a professional video editor, and I tend to not have a huge amount of time to do these things. So that's where I'd personally draw the line. But I think it's a case of figuring out what works for you over time. Thank you. Always. Hi. Um, how do you feel about content resharing? So you have previously shared a video, and it was a success or a failure, and you reshare it. Like, it rework 
a second time and can it beat the first failure? Oh, that's a good question. Um, are you, do you mean like resharing on TikTok or yeah. resharing on... Um, it's not something we've done a lot, to be honest. It's, it's something that kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I would rather try again with something new than to kind of keep uploading the same thing over and over again. I, um, however, resharing on YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels and uh, TikTok and Reddit and other places, I really strongly recommend you do. Um, we've actually had quite a modest good amount of success with Vampire Survivors resharing on YouTube uh, Shorts. Uh, so yeah, I would, I would recommend doing that, but for the most part, I would rather pour that energy into just like making and having another attempt with something quick. Okay, uh, thanks. No worries. Hi, great talk. Thank you. Uh, I'd like uh, to ask uh, so for a solution for a very specific problem. Uh, we live uh, in a non-English speaking country, and when you post a TikTok, uh, it gets shown to people from our own country. So if we make it in our local language, it will never go to a global audience, obviously. Mm -hmm. And if we post in English, we have pretty bad engagement. So do you have a solution for this problem, maybe? This is, an, this is the eternal question. I think generally what we would recommend you do is just like hire a community manager in the UK and have them post from there. That's what I think the reason that you're probably getting bad engagement on those videos is that even though they're in the English language, they're getting, still getting shown to like local audiences. Yeah. So you kind of, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Because if you make a video in the native language, you're reaching less people. But if you make a video in English, you're sort of not speaking in the language of your local community. So annoyingly, it does help to just kind of either uh, do a bit of um, subterfuge with a VPN or post from a different region. Uh, okay, yes. thanks. No worries. Oh, I think that would be... Oh, easy. I th I'm, I'm supposed to ultimate, she, I think. She was first. Okay, cool. Um, I was a couple minutes late, so I apologize if you covered this already. No worries. Um, you mentioned YouTube Shorts, and we know that uh, TikTok's very open to letting people download and share on other platforms. How? What have you seen in terms of being able to track analytics or how that goes on to other non-TikTok platforms and how that, you know. I mean, we haven't done like a real, for, for us, this has just basically been, it doesn't take a lot of time and there's no drawback, so just throw it out there. We haven't looked super hard, frankly, because the performance has not been impressive enough for us to really want to deep dive into reels or shorts just yet. I think if we started seeing numbers that were comparable to what we were seeing on TikTok, we might pay more attention, but for now it's more just a matter of, um, giving ourselves sort of a, a wider, just a, just a bigger shot, right? Um, but yeah, TikTok is still very much the number one platform for us, and that has the, uh, the massive organic reach that we just don't have anywhere else. Thank you. No worries. Hi, thank you so much for your talk. Um, you showed at the very beginning a pretty beautiful uh, correlation between uh, the videos and the Wizleash. And my question is, do you have more information about this with leash? Uh, we, I mean, profile, are they, uh, what is the conversion rate? Are they high profile uh, customer? I mean, we all know it's important to have a wish listing for the position and on the Steam, but beside that, they finally convert, how is? Uh, Chancy, yes, the conversion is worse. Yes, 100%, I think. Wish list conversions from TikTok, are generally not as strong as when you build up a personal brand elsewhere. And this is you know, something that comes up a lot where people are like, oh yes, you got 5,000 wish lists that you wouldn't have had elsewhere, but um, you know, they're not as good. And it's like, yes, they are not as good. However, the if, between the choice of like not having those wish lists and having another 5,000 that are not as good, I'll take the latter, right? Um, so yeah, it is, it is weaker conversion, sadly, but I think it's kind of worth making that bargain just to have uh, that extra profile, especially considering how it will contribute to your game being promoted within Steam. Uh, we, we still think it's worth it, basically. Yeah, absolutely, yes. To set expectations, yeah, yeah, I have a thousand of thousands with the list, but then they only convert 1%, so. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Hello. Uh, where are you actually making the, the ask for someone to wish list, you know, in the video, in your bio, in the description? Uh, we tend to have it in the bio. Um, we, again, I think Thomas made a great point in the talk he did before mine, which is that you shouldn't hammer home too much with the calls to action, because for people, people on TikTok are so apathetic and disengaged that if you ask them to actually click on something else, they'll just be like, oh, no. Um, so it's better to do, 
uh, engagement farming, asking, would you play this? Or what do you want to see next kind of things? And you know, get more engagement. And then the few number of people who are actually curious enough to click through the profile, that's when you hit them with the wish list and give them the link. And you want to have as little friction as possible between that action of going to the bio and getting to the Steam page to hit the link. So that's what you should focus on. All right, thank you. No worries. Hello. Oh, oh. Do you think about people playing your game being able to make TikTokable content from the game, or are you mostly focused on you posting the videos? Uh, yeah, it's not something we consider, to be honest. I mean, the, the TikTok um, like influencer world is something that's still growing, and we're still kind of figuring out what that looks like, right? Um, so we generally try and focus on just making something that's really beautiful and compelling and, and easy for, from our perspective. And uh, we still see the best, and again, that guy said in terms of conversion, making a game that uh, performs really well on Twitch and YouTube for an influencer standpoint is still kind of more beneficial to us. Um, but it's not something that you optimize for. Oh, God, no, 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 no. We don't, we don't like go to our indie devs and say, you should do this because it's better for TikTok, right? We don't want to um, hamper people's artistic vision like that. It's more about trying to tailor the approach uh, to whatever the game is. Like some games are just not a good fit for TikTok, honestly, like, you know, strategy games, anything that has a huge amount of information on screen, uh, stuff that's not, you know, you can't sort of instantly pass, you're going to have a harder time with it. But uh, so, yeah, we more try to tailor our campaign to tick to the uh, game rather than the other way around. Thanks. Hello. Thank you Yo. for your talk. Uh, you talked about followers, uh, watch time, views. What is the main KPI you follow to check if you're, what you're doing is... Sorry, successful? can you repeat that? What is the main cap, uh, key indicator factor, key performance indicator that you're following that really like... Uh, like for I instance, you talked about followers. Mm -hmm. Is that super important? Uh, it helps. It helps. Yes, but um, unfortunately, again, because of that for you page thing, you can actually have a lot of followers and still have a lot of duds. So we just tend to look at each video individually, and then we use followers as a kind of rough indicator of how we're doing on like a big, uh, on like a bigger scale. But yeah, you can have a lot of you can have a lot of followers and have a lot of duds. You can have no followers and do really well. So um, while that kind of indicates our growth over time, we don't use that too much as a metric of like how well we're doing. Uh, we just try to think about what we're going to do next ultimately. Thank you. Uh, I think we have, do we have time for one more? Or? Okay, one more. Thank you. Uh, so uh, this is sort of branching off the earlier question about uh, having your game designed for TikTok ability. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we're working on a mobile game. Um, where it's uh, in lands, and we're taking that sort of TikTok ability into account. But one question is, our stuff is uh, is landscape, mm -hmm. and TikTok is obviously portrait. Yes. So, uh, just curious if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, would you just do sort of like closer in shots so that it you always get something in portrait, or or does it work to put uh, landscape video? You know, fitting in the portrait. It's, yeah, it's tricky. I think we do a little bit of both. Um, I would recommend you go and have a look at the Clone Drone in the Danger Zone TikTok account, because that's a VR game, right? I mean, they've, they've turned it into a VR game, and what they typically do is they kind of pick out the most important bit of action, they zoom in on that, and then they have a kind of desaturated sort of version of the video that takes up the rest of the space. Um, so you do, if you're going to have like black bars either side of the video, I think sometimes it can be fine. Use that information well, right? So like put some good text there, maybe put a call to action, use it as best you can. Um, yeah, and think about your game from the perspective of someone who has uh, no attention span whatsoever. <laughs> Have you recommend what was it? What was the game that you said? Uh, Clone Drone in the Danger Zone. Okay. So they do a lot of clever visual tricks to kind of fill up the screen, even though it's a landscape game. Got it. Thank you. Um, yes, I think that's all done. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I will be hanging around for chats afterwards. But cheers, guys.